world will note that the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. A warm hell from Hiroshima. My name is Matsui Kazumi, and I am the mayor of Hiroshima, and also the president of Mayors for Peace. This video, to mark 75 years since atomic bombings, has been created by four prominent international interface and intercultural organizations, making a joint appeal for nuclear abolition for the first time. It is my great honor to have this opportunity to offer a few words as a part of such a meaningful production. On August 6, 1945, the world saw the first atomic bombing in history. And the Hibakusha, those who barely survived, have been appealing for peace with their conviction. No one else should ever suffer as we have. However, Despite the fervent will of the Hibakusha, self-centered nationalists on the right and governments are expanding and strengthening their nuclear arsenals. What's more, the world is now confronted with the great challenge of COVID-19. With many countries, people are united in a spirit of humanitarianism against the virus. However, between countries, tensions are still high. Nuclear weapons, like an infectious disease, are a common threat to humanity. Civil society must unite to fight against this threat. In turn, policymakers around the world must respond to such public opinion by taking action. Mayors for Peace, composed of more than 7,900 member cities in 164 countries and regions around the world. Stand with policymakers who courageously seek to eliminate nuclear weapons and absolute evil for humanity. I sincerely hope that everyone watching this video will join our fight for lasting world peace. みなさんこんにちは。平和市長会議副会長を務めている長崎市長の田上と美久です。1945年8月9日に原爆による壊滅的被害を経験した長崎市の市民を代表して平和と連帯のメッセージをお送りします。このビデオは被爆75周年という節目の年に一人一人がそれぞれの立場で核兵器廃絶に向けた行動を起こすことを呼びかけることを目的に制作されたと伺っていますこのような意義ある取り組みに参加できることを光栄に思います私たちは今新型コロナウイルス感染症の世界的流行によって安全と安心を失う経験をしています核兵器もまた地球全体から安全と安心を長時間にわたり奪う存在ですしかし、残念ながら、身近に感じることができません。このままでは、その脅威の大きさに本当に気づくのは、どこかで再び使われた後になるのではないか、と、被爆者をはじめ、被爆地は懸念しています。しかし、それでは手遅れなのです。
ノートゥニュークリアウェポンズ核兵器はいらないと一緒に声を上げてください矢崎は被爆者の平和への思いを次の世代に引き継ぎ市民社会に平和の文化を育むための取り組みと平和市長会議のネットワークなどを通じて世界に仲間を増やしていく活動を続けていきますこのビデオをご覧の皆さんが私たちの仲間となり一緒に行動してくれることを心からお待ちしています正義の味方になられる助けてあげたいなそういう気持ち子供を思ってましたねですからそういう気持ちが強かったから母自分の母親になるならとね言葉の表現できないでね記憶に残ってるのは偉い人になってください<笑>それはですね多分もう少々書くことはありますね。Three and a half decades ago, the world was moving very rapidly toward a Cold War turning into a fire of destruction. In the United States and the Soviet Union, very public demonization had overcome reasoned political discourse, and the readiness to use nuclear and other weapons of mass destruction precariously hung over all of our heads. From the over 65,000 nuclear warheads then to the less than 14,000 today, progress has certainly been made. But the risks remain utterly unacceptable, and much needs to be done. This vision for a safer, nuclear weapons free world remains to be fulfilled. That is our task today. It is thus an enormous honor to hear today from President Mikhail Gorbachev. And Secretary of State George Shultz, two men who not only made history, it's really fair to say they helped save history. And for that, and I know I express this for millions, millions of people, thank you so very much. Mikhail. You were dynamite when you were in office. You had imagination, you had strength, you had vision, and you changed things. And with your option of President Reagan, you changed the world. I'm in my hundredth year, but I feel like a promising young man. Let me tell you a story. About how things get started and the vital importance of leadership in making that happen. When we came into office in the Reagan period, relations with the Soviets were as cold as they could be. After they invaded Afghanistan, President Jimmy Carter cut off all relations with them. When I came into the, the job of Secretary of State, I worried about this because, as Secretary of Treasury, I had dealt with the Soviets and made deals with them that worked and got to know the personalities and had some fun and one or two rather dramatic circumstances. So I was uneasy. I talked to President Reagan. Who、uh, was surrounded by people who wanted to keep things down. And he gave me permission to have weekly meetings with Ambassador to Britain if the purpose, we would stick to the purpose of getting little weeds out of the place before they grew. We had enough problems 
So New Brennan was allowed to take part. So one day, I'm returning from a trip to China, and I landed at Air Force Base. It was snowing. I was lucky to land. And our phone rings. It's Nancy. She says, why don't you, you and your wife come over and have supper with us at the White House? So then they started asking me about Soviet leaders, because they knew I'd dealt with them in the past. And so I brought the Brennan over, and we talked about seeing it drop up, and it was reassuring. Then we talked about Soviet Jewry. It wasn't just generalizations. He had names, places, incidents. Then we talked about the Pentecostals who had brushed in their embassy during the Carter administration. They were still there. Because if you expel them, they get killed. And what can it do? Reagan kept saying, it's like a big neon sign in Moscow saying, we don't treat people right. We don't let them worship the way they want. We don't let them treat them right. We ought to do something about it. I won't say a word. I just want something to happen. So we're riding back, and I said to the Britain, let's take on the Pentecostal project, see if we can do something about it. So we did. And after a while, I finally got a piece of paper back from the Soviets that I thought was promising, although I could see it had its problems. And I took it over to the president, and I said, Mr. President, please don't call your lawyer. He'll point out the holes in this memo. But I have to believe that after all that's preceded this, and this is a pretty good memo, if we get them out of the embassy, they'll be allowed to go home and eventually immigrate. So we decided to do it. And we got them out, and sure enough, they were allowed to go home. And after a period, not only were they allowed to emigrate, but all their families were allowed. It was huge, 50 or 60 people. It was gigantic. Nothing like that had ever happened before. Of course, the press was after us. How did that happen? And Reagan would say nothing. And I always felt that two little things were done as a result of that. On the one hand, Reagan could say, I trust the Soviets to deliver what they say they'll deliver. And they more than did that. And they have to say, he said he wouldn't say anything, and he didn't. And then we all knew the temptation of an American politician to take credit for anything. So there's just a little element of trust there. Trust is the coin of the realm. So that built, and I think it was part of the evolution of the relationship between two personal giants, Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev. And they could interact comfortably with each other because they trusted each other. They knew that the other one would do whatever they said they would do. So that was a big thing. Особенно я хотел сказать, вложив все эмоциональное, что в моей душе существует что хуже всего то, что в последние годы произошел коллапс доверия в отношениях между ведущими державами, которые согласны уставу ООН, несут главную ответственность. Главную ответственность за поддержание международного права, за безопасность, которая по-прежнему обладает огромными запасами ядерного оружия. И обязаны его сокращать, вплоть до его ликвидации. Это обязательство договора о нераспространении никто не отменял. Я с огромной тревогой вынужден говорить о милитаризации международных отношений. Это результат вот всей этой всех этих ошибок, которые допущены, громко, крупных, опасных, проблемы, конфликты последних двух десятилетий, которые вполне можно было бы урегулировать мирными политическими, дипломатическими средствами, 
пытаясь решить путем применения силы. Так было и в бывшей Белостайке, и в Ираке, и в Ливии, и в Сирии. Хочу подчеркнуть, что это не привело к решению проблем. Результатом стало расшатывание международного права, подрыва доверия, милитаризации, милитаризации как политики, так и мышления. И в этих условиях говорить о движении к безъядерному миру становится все труднее. Это надо честно признать. Пока мировая политика не вернется в нормальную колею, пока не произойдет демилитаризация, международных отношений. Цель совместно обозначена и в Рейкявике будет не приближаться, а отдаляться. Чтобы изменить такое положение, необходим диалог. Фактически отказ от него в последние годы был самой большой ошибкой. Давно уже пора возобновить и по всей повестке дня, не ограничиваясь обсуждением региональных проблем, по которым существует разногласие. В годы, когда мы покончили с холодной войной, мы признали, что помимо национальных и иных интересов, есть общие интересы, прежде всего предотвращение ядерной войны. They'd like to have a preliminary meeting before the Washington meeting. We said Reykjavik would be okay because it's isolated. Hafti House had it downstairs and there was a little room on the side. That's where we met. The room was very small. Reagan's at one end, Gorbachev's at the other end. I'm sitting beside Reagan. Uh, Shevardnadze beside Gorbachev. That's all the interpreters. So it's a very intimate discussion. We were there for two days. And we had real exchanges. And on the first day, morning, Gorbachev laid on the table all of our negotiating points. He was agreeing to them. All of them. We were astonished. We went back and talked it over our group. And then all of a sudden, he put a condition on everything, that we have to kill a strategic defense initiative. And Reagan had proposed this, and his idea was that people will sort of will find ballistic missiles, and somehow you have to defend yourself against them. And he wasn't about to give it up. So we had, on the one hand, a huge amount of progress, including a world free of nuclear weapons. In the end, we couldn't agree on anything. We, we did agree in a separate negotiation that human rights would be a regular recognized item on our agenda. That was a breakthrough, I mean, very important marker. Then we had the Washington summit, which the INF treaty was signed. That was first big breakthrough of reducing, it eliminated an entire uh, class of nuclear weapons. And these were relatively short range ones, which were very dangerous because the amount of time between when they're fired and when they hit is like nothing. And so the chance to defend yourself is minimal. Um, so, uh, После того, что было сказано, что ядерная война недопустима, что в ней не может быть победителей, и что она не, нельзя остаться в такой ситуации, что надо заняться всей этой нагромождением этим, избавляться от ядерного оружия. Думаю, что Рейкьявик – это действительно то, что останется в истории навсегда. Ибо не будет Рейкьявика того, что хоть и с трудом, но что последовало после него, как начала меняться ситуация и отношения. Мы могли прийти такой, когда и ядерное оружие могло при его масштабах и вырваться из-под контроля политического. Поэтому надо было сделать. И мы пошли. Переговоры были интенсивными, очень основательными, прямыми. Были президенты, 
были министры иностранных дел с ними. И была большая группа инспекторов политических и военных, э, экспертов. Удивительно, что все как бы чувствовали, что здесь что-то произойти должно серьезно. Что изменить всю ситуацию в мире. Все. Обычно неугомонные представители прессы ждали. Точно так же, как и все мы, видели, что получается. Начались, мы начали выходить и на договоренности, означающие какие-то детали. То есть все можно, решая, решается. И вот когда вдруг появилась тема о оборона, стратегической оборонной инициативе, Я и сейчас даже не могу сказать, что я полностью убежден, что вот это как бы продуманная, выношенная идея. Получается, что вроде бы американцы не очень-то хотели и боялись. Ведь не, не, не зря же. Не случайно Тейчер сказала, еще один рейкьявик мы не выдержим. Не очень они хотели, хотя по разговорам Реган иногда даже первым говорил, мы должны идти к безъядерному миру. Поэтому это вот было, это было самое большое потрясение. И вот драматическое продолжение этой ситуации выглядело так, что мы, договорившись практически обо всем, мы могли получить уже в Ерикьявике готовый документ. И все оборвалось. Это было, конечно, вообще. Нас составило это очень серьезно думать о наших партнерах. С какими мыслями, с какими планами, с какими расчет, какие у них расчеты. И э, особенно для меня было важно то, что Шульц, улетая с военного, с Рекьявика, в беседе с, с журналистами сказал, что к сожалению, не состоялось. Высказал разочарование в связи с тем, что прорыв не состоялся. Я за, это, за этот тезис надо было развенчать. Потому что мы так много сделали, действительно заглянули за горизонт, что там уже в безъядерном мире отдать такое на съедение, на уничтожение реакционным силам, прямо скажем. Это было бы недопустимо и непростительно. Я сказал, все рассказал, как есть. И сказал, что это прорыв. На утро Шульцу доложили, что я сказал, и он собрал тут же пресс-конференцию и присоединился в Соединенные Штаты. Это, конечно, надо сказать, воздать должное Шульцу. Он вообще играл весьма конструктивную и позитивную роль. As the Reykjavik meeting was winding down, Mikhail Gorbachev took me aside and said, George, you've seen the promised land and didn't get there. I said, Mikhail, so have you, and you didn't get there. And the reason is you had a roadblock on our learning how to prevent ourselves by being hit from a ballistic missile. So if we prohibit them, let's get rid of all this stuff. 
and we parted. Since then, things have gone downhill. People think of all kinds of reasons not to do the work. But there is something hopeful beyond simply a belief that a worthwhile goal is to get to the promised land. I'm really excited to know that the National Academy of Sciences here has, with some very prominent physicists, once again in touch with their counterparts in Russia, and they're meeting fairly frequently, lining out possible positions and problems, and also getting to know each other. This is a very good development. And it is supported by the fact that the Vatican and the Russian Orthodox Church are trying to do something of similar nature. So, with all of the gloom and doom people are spreading, forget it. Something good is happening. And in the end, the good things will prevail. Dear friends, my nuclear journey began 75 years ago. In the summer of 1945, I was a U.S. Marine captain on a troop ship in the Pacific bound for San Diego. Early in the voyage, we heard that something called an atomic bomb had been dropped on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. By the time we reached port in San Diego, a second bomb had been used at Nagasaki. We wouldn't be headed to the Japanese mainland after all. Ronald Reagan believed that nuclear weapons were immoral. My friend Bishop Swing has rightly observed that while the U.S. president may put his hand on the Bible at his inauguration, it is when he puts his hand on the nuclear trigger that he assumes a godlike power. But we are men, not gods. Together with President Gorbachev, we had seen the promised land, but we had not been able to get there during our negotiations. Today, I am alarmed. We live in an unsafe world that grows more dangerous with the proliferation of nuclear weapons. We need to make sure that the global population understands the gravity of the nuclear threat, and we do everything we can to reduce the risks of that threat. But I am also optimistic. I see that wise and knowledgeable people are talking about these crucial issues. Such dialogue can lead to progress, so there is hope. I have seen the promised land, so I know that it exists, and the leaders who can take us there can emerge from among our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Sincerely yours, George P. Schultz. Дорогие друзья, я был очень рад узнать от моего друга Джорджа Шульца, что в связи с 75-й годовщиной атомной бомбардировки Хиросимы ваша организация планирует выступить совместным заявлением о необходимости ликвидации ядерного оружия. It is a passionate appeal to join the fight for a nuclear weapon-free future for all mankind. Fighting for the abolition of nuclear weapons is the civic duty of each and every one of us. Together with you, I am appealing to the citizens of all countries. Put pressure on your leaders, politicians and elected officials. Keep telling them again and again that the very existence of nuclear weapons poses a deadly threat to humanity. Demand that they take concrete action so that the arsenals of nuclear weapons get smaller with every passing year. We started on the road to a world without nuclear weapons in Reykjavik. It turned out to be a difficult and thorny path. But there must be no other goal than the complete elimination, the abolition of nuclear weapons. I wish you the strength of spirit, dedication and perseverance in advancing that goal. С уважением, Михаил Горбачев.
でそれはまだ家が潰れた人の下敷きにいる人たちもう2日目ですから腐ってるでそれから不思議に思うことはあの肺がね真っ暗になるぐらい人の背中について何百匹という肺が。背中について飛びもしないで黙々と傷ついた人が歩いてる背中について一緒に歩いてってるんですよね本当に不気味なそれでまあ川をの橋を渡ると川にはもう人がプカプカプカプカ浮いて流れてでみんな水を求めて川の方へ川の方へ行った人たちが力尽きて川に入っちゃって。あの流されてていってるんですねそういう中をこうその刺繍の中をあの黙々と何て言うか歩いていくしか仕方がなかったんですね Seventy-five years ago this month, the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were obliterated by nuclear bombs. The world has never been the same since these bombings. It ushered a lethal nuclear arms race that during the height of the Cold War. We had tens of thousands of nuclear weapons. Efforts were made simultaneously to curb the proliferation, the spread, the risk of nuclear weapons. At the international level, the cornerstone was the Non Proliferation Treaty in 1970, of which, as a Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, I had good part in managing it. I've seen at that time the inequality of the system, the vulnerability of the system, a commitment by the non nuclear weapon states not to have nuclear weapons, and lack of commitment by the weapon states to make good on their obligation. To move to our nuclear disarmament. We are in a, a fork in the road. We are either going to come to our senses and move to our nuclear disarmament or continue with the daily risk that we might wake up tomorrow morning and discover that the world is no longer the one we used to have. The Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, adopted just over three years ago at the United Nations, is a bright light on the international arena. The proof that the majority of states in the world do not believe that nuclear weapons are acceptable or legitimate. As we in ICANN commemorate the 75th anniversary of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we must honor the Hibakusha. After experiencing unprecedented trauma, Many as young children, the Hibakusha have led exceptional lives in the pursuit of peace and the selfless goal of ensuring that no one else ever endures what they have. To date, thanks to the tireless efforts of the Hibakusha, over 10 million people have signed their appeal to fulfill this goal and join us in making this a reality. We have a duty to mark this anniversary by understanding and responding to our growing nuclear challenges today. In 2007, George Shultz, Bill Perry, Henry Kissinger, and I called for reducing reliance on nuclear weapons globally as a vital contribution to preventing their proliferation and ultimately ending them as a threat to the world. There are several key steps we should urge governments to take to reduce nuclear risk. First, Russia and the United States have 90% of the world's nuclear weapons. So, as has been said, we are really doomed to cooperate. Second, as a critical near term step, the United States and Russia 
should extend the New START Treaty and should begin to discuss what comes next. Third, our leaders, beginning with the United States and Russia, must develop red line understandings for cyber and space. Fourth, President Trump and President Putin should mandate that their military and scientific leaders work on options to increase decision time for decision makers. Fifth, we must begin to use technology in a big way to reduce, not increase risk. Every nuclear weapon state should undertake a comprehensive review of their own nuclear weapon systems. As we mark this 75th anniversary of the devastation of Hiroshima, I thank you for bringing people of different faiths together to prevent the Earth's destruction. Thank you. What happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki 75 years ago continues to still haunt humanity. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, which is now a form of a set of over 300 stations around the globe, monitoring day in and day out the planet, the ocean, in the search for nuclear testing. I commend Japan for every single year at the exact same time marking the anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I attended several of those events, inspired by the magnitude and the seriousness put to these events, but also being inspired by two people, the late Keijiro Matsushima, who talked about his suffering, the suffering of the people of Japan the suffering of the people of Hiroshima. And that led me to my meeting with a young girl, Shizuka Kuramitsu, who was in the audience when I was giving a talk. And then I found her in tears when I was talking about the threat caused by nuclear weapon. Her passion and her will to bring change led me to form the CTBTO youth group together with her to learn, to be inspired, and then to prepare a better world. A world free of nuclear testing for a world free of nuclear weapon. Let the clarion call for disarmament resonate and reverberate from our young voices until it shakes the highest echelons of power and forces them to right these wrongs. Every dollar wasted on nuclear weapons is a dollar that could save a life. We must take, if required, grab the reins of our destiny in our hands. It will not be easy, but together we can. Come join with me and I will join with you. Together, let's create a global youth movement. Let us do what the last generation could not do a world free of nuclear weapons. Yet a she a twinch eating initially, Sinambusi Bashishin, Kiani Dashiche, Twoglini Dashinella. Hello, my name is Leona Morgan, and I am Dine from the Navajo Nation. Right now, I am on occupied Tiwa lands with the Cindia Mountains right behind me. 75 years ago, the first atomic weapon to ever be detonated was here in our state. The Trinity test took place on July 16th, about 5.30 in the morning, on a population of unknowing and unwilling victims. On that same day, July 16th, but in 1979, at the same time in the morning, the world's largest uranium spill took place in a Didna community north of Church Rock, New Mexico. Many have died from various cancers, and countless others have been harmed from exposure to radiation including impacts to their children and livestock, even today, decades after those unforgiving events. As we all work toward restoring balance and healing for our Mother Earth and for the protection of future generations, please use whatever power you have to help stop the unspoken genocide of the nuclear era. Ashaha. Thank you. Jinrui
こうして今生かされていることは語りたいあの私は本当に語るために被爆証言をするために今生かされてるんだな辛くてもやっぱり語る以外にないってこれは私の使命じゃないかなってそして世界の指導者よ広島に来てこの原爆のこの原爆ドームももちろんでもあの資料館に来てあの被爆の状態を見てほしい世界の指導者が見てほしいこの青い地球とこの緑の大地美しい地球をね未来の人たちに残してやりたいこれが私の念願です。If you are young, demand governmental action before these weapons rob you and your children of a future. If you are a diplomat, keep pounding away at the legal commitments contained in treaties that are already in force, which are designed to reduce and eliminate the threat that these weapons. Whether you are a faith leader or a faith follower, pray, preach, prophesize, and mobilize to end the threat of nuclear war. If you are not informed on these matters, become educated. Subscribe to a nuclear newsletter and wake up. If you're a politician, Join parliamentarians and leaders worldwide who are working to stop the modernization and expansion of the capacity of nuclear weapons in quality and quantity, and advance policies and legislation that reduces the threat of the use of the weapons, stops their spread, and leads to their elimination. If you are a citizen, join a nuclear weapons abolition group, march in the streets, write letters, pray fervently, and demand. That institutions stop investing in the nuclear weapon industry. If you're a scientist, don't let your work be used towards the nuclear weapon complex. Speak up and tell the world about the devastation that would happen if a nuclear blast occurred. If you're an environmentalist, recognize that nuclear weapons are the immediate and ultimate climate change of all time. If You are a nation armed with nuclear weapons. Join with other nuclear nations to establish a joint enterprise committed to working for the elimination of nuclear weapons. My name is Azza Karam, and I serve as the Secretary General of Religions for Peace International. That means that I serve a community of religious leaders representing their religious institutions and their religious communities already in existence for 50 years. We believe that religions can add value, can be a prophetic voice, are the voice of morality and peace. And because of that, we come together with a determination not only that we speak as individual religious institutions. Or that we speak as a couple of ecumenical institutions. But we come together in Religions for Peace as all religions working together towards the same end. It is the fundamental human message, the divine message, inspired by the divine's own creation of us as different peoples with different faiths. We come together as one because that is how we honor the divine. And we come together as one. From all different religious walks of life, from all different regions, ethnicities, genders, you name it, we come together as people of faith, as religious institutions, as religious leaders, young and old, male and female, to advocate for the absolute necessity 
of continuing the journey towards absolutely no nuclear weapons, no nuclear war, not even the threat thereof. We must realize this together. And as faith institutions, we have a moral obligation to continue to raise this message systematically and to do so with our sisters and brothers from across the different interfaith and multi-faith organizations. Religions for Peace is committed as a movement, as a mission of religions working together for peace. And there can be no peace where there is nuclear threat. It's as simple as that. My name is Victor Kazanjan, and I'm the executive director of URI, the United Religions Initiative. URI is a global network of grassroots interfaith peace builders of all beliefs, working in 108 countries around the world to promote enduring daily interfaith cooperation, to end religiously motivated violence, and to create cultures of peace, justice, and healing for the earth and all living beings. In looking at the earth from such a distance, one sees one planet, a single organism upon which all life is interconnected and interdependent. Foremost among the many atrocities that humanity has inflicted upon people and planet is the development and use of nuclear weapons. The use or threat of use of such a power that destroys all life at a massive scale is a betrayal of the spiritual values of the world's wisdom traditions. One of the core values of the URI global community as expressed in the preamble to our charter is that we unite to use our combined resources only for nonviolent, compassionate action, to awaken to our deepest truths and to manifest love and justice among all life in our earth community. We call upon people of all beliefs and cultures throughout the world to reject the death-dealing forces of nuclear weapons and embrace the life-affirming commitment that we will never again rain such evil destruction upon the peoples of this planet or the earth herself. May peace prevail among all people. May peace prevail on earth. I'm Marilyn Turkovich, the Executive Director of the Charter for Compassion. The Charter for Compassion is a document that implores us to care about each other, to love one another, and it impels us to practice the Golden Rule. The core of the Golden Rule is to treat others as we wish to be treated. Importantly, the Charter for Compassion is a network of individuals, partner organizations, and city initiatives that work to deal with issues that divide and threaten our unity as a global community. The Charter for Compassion envisions a world in which the darkness of suffering is healed by the light of compassionate action, in which children and adults are literate in the transformative nature and power of the value of compassion, in which we treat ourselves, each other, and the natural world with dignity and respect manifesting the golden rule in all relationships. In keeping with creating a sustainable future and fulfilling our obligations to future generations, the Charter is committed to working with voices for a world free of nuclear weapons, to eliminate nuclear weapons once and for all. The threat of having nuclear weapons on our planet is not acceptable, nor is it tolerable. It is our responsibility to assure that these weapons are not left for future generations with which to deal. We must rethink sustaining these weapons and communicate our concerns as ethical and compassionate people. Welcome everyone. My name is Audrey Kitagawa. I'm the chair of the Parliament of the World's Religions one of the four interfaith organizations sponsoring this commemorative 75th anniversary of the dropping of the nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We are in remembrance of all of the people who suffered as a result of these bombings. Each of these four interfaith organizations have made a commitment 
to take a moral, spiritual, and ethical stand to support the abolition of nuclear weapons. This joint statement is also a historic moment where we recognize that we must model this cooperative engagement to maximize our ability to create a global movement of civil society to meet our goals of a nuclear weapons free world. In November 2018, the Parliament of the World's Religions generated a response to the unique challenge of nuclear weapons by issuing a passionate call. This call noted that conduct that demonstrates a present readiness to use nuclear weapons is immoral and its possession illegal. The belief that the necessity of such weapons will keep countries safe and secure creates such a false sense of safety and security. The potential for the total destruction of life brings to the forefront of our awareness that while political processes are essential in negotiating legal instruments of peace and security, the important role which religious communities play on this and all major global issues and challenges must be acknowledged. The religious faith communities articulate our common values that honors and respects life, nonviolence, and the ways of peace. Our ethical spiritual principles that comprise the foundation from which all religions and sacred texts arise is the catalyst that will propel us there. But we must know that that catalyst is powered by love. In my own life, I had the privilege to have a beloved spiritual mother who told me God is love. If we believe that God is love, then we must know that every thought, word, and action of love is bringing the actualization of the living reality of God into our daily lives. Together, we can reach the promised land of a nuclear weapons-free world because our collective love will take us there. ね。愛がね。戦争は起きないんです。ね。愛という字を見てください。ね。一つは心の触れ合い、心の交わり。ね。これがないから戦争起きる。やっぱりね、本当にこの戦争したいけんと。ましてや原爆弾の銃ね、韓国をね、絶対になくさないけんというのが私の本当の心からのお願いですよ。広島の地に生まれ育ちました。今私は平和公園にいます。私の後ろに見えるのは原爆ドームです。広島では原爆投下後75年間は草木も生えないと言われていましたが、1945年9月には神奈の花が咲き、翌年には焼けただれた樹木
この植樹式はジョージ・シャーロット・シュルツ夫妻の長年にわたる外交や世界平和への貢献を記念したものでしたこの物語は希望の物語であり慰めと真の和解をもたらす物語だと私は思います被爆樹木はその声なき声で未来の子どもたちのために核兵器なき世界を実現するとともに多くの地球上の命が共に生きることのできる世界を作り上げていく責務が私たちにあることを静かに語り続けています。Greetings. My name is William Swing, and I work for Voices for a World Free of Nuclear Weapons. This rare moment of history invites us to stop and consider the place of nuclear weapons in our world today, not only in silos, in submarines and bombers, but in our hearts and souls and minds. The four interfaith organizations would like to memorialize this moment, and therefore we would like to make this announcement quote, Beginning today, each year, there will be a young person designated to receive the Voices Youth Award in honor of Mikhail Gorbachev and George Shultz. And this year, the award goes to Kekashan Basu. When sheltering in place ends, we will get together with Kekashan and make sure that a surviving tree from Hiroshima or Nagasaki will be planted in her honor in a location of her choosing. In closing, thank you for watching, first of all. Thank all who participated. Thank all the quiet people who made the connections. And finally, a big shout out to all of the nuclear weapons. Organizations that work courageously all over the world every day to abolish these weapons. Thank you all. Thank、you